Great morning to you all. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and he adds no sorrow to it. No sorrows to it. I'm sure that you enjoyed your services on yesterday. We had a powerful time in the Lord on yesterday. We thank him for his moving of the spirit. We thank him for the word of God. Um, I know that there's still, there's so much that um, God wants to do for his people. And we're just not, uh, as one of my, someone I know said, you know, Lord said, keep, to, to kept saying, get in position. So many of us are missing blessings and missing the secret things of God because we are not in position. Um, what does that mean? It means that you're not in that space in your mind and in your spirit and in your, your humility to have a greater unbothered uh, or un, what is I want to say, uh, where the connection is strong and stronger uh, with God. And so when we're not there, I'm thinking in the terms of um, the prophet that God had told to, well, he positioned himself on the tower and he said, uh, you're using the Chaldeans to punish us. We're your people. Why did you allow, hi, Claretta, why did you allow the Chaldeans, which that's a wicked nation, why did you allow them to attack us? And so he says, I'm going to sit right here and position myself in this tower until you answer me. There's so many of us in the body that are not positioned. We're not alert. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're, uh, we're not spiritually alert enough to hear God, recognize his voice. We are not spiritually alert enough. Hey, Leisha. Hey, baby. We're not spiritually alert enough to receive from God. We Sometimes he comes and he gives to us and does for us and we don't recognize that it's from his hand, um, the hand of God. I told the members yesterday, the Lord said, we qualify for blessings. You qualify because you're in the family of God. And when you're obedient, God gives us to us bonuses and perks. Uh, but also we qualify for suffering. Uh, love you, darling. Uh, he puts us in his family for us to experience things um, from a perspective of the kingdom. People in the world suffer. People in the world get some blessings because he blesses the just and uh, reigns on the just like the unjust. But when he deals with a child of God in the kingdom of God, he wants us to learn to position ourselves. And that means in your mind, in your spirit. He wants us to position ourselves for our ears to hear what he's saying. And he wants us to position ourselves. Hey, darling. Hey, darling. He wants us to position ourselves not only to hear, but in, uh, for us to be connected, to be open, to receive so that we can get our orders from him. Uh, one example, I said to you that um, God had spoken to me before uh, I went to Tennessee Fifth. He had spoken to me. I was just simply watching um, the broad, their broadcast for their convocation back in, I think it was August. And I was watching other broadcasts. I was watching uh, uh, in Michigan. I like uh, the way they uh, do. I was just watching. I don't normally do that. And um also watching Bishop Brandon Porter's convocation. I didn't watch everything all the way through, but for some reason I was just watching 
and um, observing. And so I guess I thought because since I had been in Tennessee fifth before, I was glad to see certain people there, certain people coming forth uh, in Tennessee fifth. And I saw myself and I rebuked myself. I saw myself ministering from the pulpit there. And I'm going like, what the world is this? God deals with me in open visions. I can see glimpses of things. I was telling my girlfriend this morning uh, as I was uh, ministering at the altar, the people that were on the altar yesterday, quickly I saw like land and at uh, the top of the land was very visible and it was like weeds, you know, standing different kinds of weeds. I knew they were weeds. That's how the Holy Spirit deals with me. And but underneath the soil, I saw vegetables and, and, and different fruits and things underneath there. And the Lord said that to tell the people on the altar the reason they came up because they're struggling so we act like people are not struggling because they got saved. Shame on you. And he said they're struggling simply because they have not allowed uh, themselves to be positioned where they can hear and understand how to cut down the weeds, how to dig them up. Because underneath the weeds, when you first get saved, you still got weeds. You still have weeds. You still have those things that cause you to struggle in life. And underneath there, there are uh, uh, beneficial vegetables uh, that benefit us and, and fruit underneath the ground. But you've got to dig up the, the weeds so that you can get to those things that nourish you. Amen. And so, but I saw myself standing in the pulpit uh, in Tennessee Fifth. And I'm going like, what the word? I rebuked myself because I know the enemy can bring stuff to your mind. And uh, I said, Vivian, go somewhere and sit yourself down. And it wasn't but a few days after that, that uh, Mother Jenkins texted me. And it didn't start out with me coming to speak. It started out with her asking me to come and give a tribute for her dinner, uh, her uh, banquet. And then she was communicating with someone and they were explaining her, to her how things went. She texted me again and I kept saying, well, let me pray about it because, you know, I'm a caregiver and I have to be careful going out among people and then coming back to my husband. And so and so she, then she texted me again and said, we've decided that I'm going to have a celebration, a celebratory uh, uh, service. I still didn't think in terms of what the Lord had spoken to me. And I still said the same thing. Let me pray about it. How much time do you need? And when I got over into the process, I said, God spoke to me. He said, there, I'm calling you there because there's a word for that house. Then later on in the process and speaking with mother, well, my, my um, adjutant, I'm not my, my secretary, I uh, kept speaking with um, uh, mother Jenkins and, and so when she was speaking with Mother Jenkins, um, uh, she said some things that really blessed my heart that Mother Jenkins said concerning me. And that's when the Lord reminded me. He said, I showed you and I told you that I was sending you there. We have to be positioned. Um, there are too many voices out there. There are too many distractions out there. There are too many blockages and possible blocks uh, around us, in our heads, uh, physically around us, geographically around us, that will stop us. Um, one of the one of the things that that um, concerns me as the one who's called of God to teach the people of God is to see people in darkness slash ignorance. Um, Paul said. Uh, listen, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning Satan's devices, the enemy's devices. There are so many devices that have been formed and being used against the body of Christ. And we don't even know it because like the prophet, we have not positioned ourselves to be in, in earshot of God's voice. We are not 
spiritually in a position to know God's blessings even. I, I, I saw before I left home, I saw the people rushing to the altar and I heard the Lord say a $25 seed. And then when I got to church, I almost forgot it. And I heard the Lord say, uh, before church started good, he said, uh, plant the seed because the ground is warm and fertile. That's what I heard in the spirit. And so at a certain point in the service, I told them and the people rushed down, they cash out and, and, and we, and, and then God blessed through that twin. So I told them that expect a harvest behind that seed. Now, had I not been in a frame of mind or positioned in my mind and my spirit to hear from God, I would have missed that. And the people who would have given would have been uh, missed the blessing. And then the church would have missed that blessing. The money didn't go to me. It went to the ministry. Uh, and so uh, God keeps showing himself strong in, in the ministry there. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with this being positioned. I didn't know what I was going to talk to you about this morning, but the Lord said, come on. But I told my husband, he wasn't alert very long. Um, we'll share it with my bishop later. In that setting, I didn't know who was going to be there. I just know I come to do what God tells me to do. If, if people don't come, it's on them. Uh, do you yourself to think that the devil didn't try to distract me, that he didn't try to do things. Once he realized, uh, he sensed something. He didn't know what it was. But he, if I begin to just praise God before I get to church, he's he's going to try to stop me. He's going to try to distract me. He's going to try to discourage me. He's going to try to um, uh, divert my attention away from what could happen in those services because he's familiar. The demons are familiar with what God does in that ministry. And so um, I saw God healing people. I heard him say this was a day of healing, not to say he wasn't going to do anything else. And I heard the Lord say, uh, once I got there, uh, he first I, he first showed me visually people running down with the $25 seed. And when I get there, I heard him plainly say, the ground is um, warm and moist and ready for the seed and a harvest. And so I text the members this morning. We have a uh, we have cell groups, and so I have a cell group leader, and we also have a public relations person. And so whatever I need to communicate, uh, my husband initiated that, and it fell down, fell apart, and I brought it back. The Lord told me to bring that back. And it's working so well. And so I sent it myself uh, this morning and I said, I want you to join me in essence uh, to look expectantly for the manifestation of that seed that you planted. Look for it. Expect it. I have something very serious before the Lord. Uh, I, uh, last week it was a serious thing. And uh, the enemy tried to use it. And I said, you will not use it. And we, when that didn't work, that situation, he pulled other things in uh, that would be irritating, that would uh, I could be overly concerned about in order for me to take all of that and pile it on top of the key issue. And so, but out of my belly, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning you all. Out of my belly came, but I magnify God. God takes care of me. God sees and knows. And then I'll talk directly to God. I, I don't want to address Satan all the time. I talk directly to God and I say to him, Father, you see where I am. You understand the situation. And this is not a surprise to you. When you start talking like that, you make the devil nervous and he has to go back and regroup and try to find something else to pull you away from the positioning. Uh, see, we're not positioned. We're not positioned. I can tell we're not positioned. And so the word of God, I asked God to confirm the word for Sunday. And that's when I find out y'all saw me make the post. Uh, I was texted by uh, the super, the uh, uh, executive secretary under my bishop. And we learned that 
uh, administrative assistant, uh, James E. Lewis, who is the husband of the deceased, my friend, uh, Patricia R. Lewis, uh, supervisor, evangelist Patricia R. Lewis. They had lost their one of their sons. And, uh, and then the Lord said, that's a confirmation that this word needs to go forth. Now, who it was going to uh, hit, I don't know. I just wanted to be positioned so I could hear from God and be obedient. Uh, because if he tells me to do a thing, there is an, an expected end. There is something that God wants to do. There's something that God wants to manifest before the people. And so um, the message that I had was so profound. It comes out of my, this time it came out of my devotion. I'm reading my Bible through again, and um, I was I'm in the book of Job, and so as I'm reading in the book of Job, uh, God began to speak to me. He said, "There it is, right there." I said, "Okay, God." And so when I accepted uh, what He was saying to me, He began to give me more. And so the title of my message I didn't post it, Lord didn't tell me to post it. I just posted that you to join me. And the message was the futility of dragging God into court. And I didn't, I've never, from the perspective of the book of Job, being in the book of poetry, and then uh, the theologians have decided as to what period of time that this Job was written and that look at the history of what was going on, the background of what was going on, going on uh, in uh, uh, the history of the writing of the children of Israel. And so all of that came to my mind from previous study, but I never looked at Job from the perspective of Job really reversed some things you remember um, Satan tried to call God into court. <laughs> Didn't work, but he had to answer to God. Everybody and everything has to answer to God. But here you have Job. And he is, the verse just jumped out at me. He says, uh, I, 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 all of us can't uh I can't consider myself calling both of us, me and God, going to court together. That That's uh, um, Job 9, verses 32, I think, to 33. Two verses. And the Lord said to me, and it's got to apply to us now. We have to pull it and, and apply it to us. And so he said to me, Vivian, anytime you or anybody else, uh, if you're not asking me why to get information, like, God, uh, show me this right here or uh, can you tell me that? But when you go to asking him why, because trouble has touched you, uh, because you feel like you're going through or something is not fairly being done in your life. When you question him and bring him into question, God said you are dragging God into court. That means you summon him. You've handed God a summons. Now, the nerve of anybody, anybody human, anybody partly human, to say to God, I'm calling you into court. So what are you doing? You're, you're, the, you're the plaintiff for sure. So are you planning to be the judge? Are you planning to be the mediator? Because there's only one God. There's only one mediator between God and man. And so the Lord said, what's really happening in Job, I want you to understand out of all of the interpretation and understanding that you get, uh, Vivian, uh, tell my people that Job needed what we already have. He was really looking down and didn't know it through the channels of time of the cross where the one mediator between God and man is Jesus Christ. Nobody else can mediate. Nobody qualifies. <laughs> Nobody else can qualify to be in court and to mediate between God and man, but the Savior. But so Job was fighting a futile battle. He was fighting an unnecessary, uh, a futile, uh, a useless battle uh, because he felt like he was innocent. He, he felt like he was innocent. And so when you feel, watch this, y'all, when you feel like you're innocent, you'll defend yourself. You don't have to do that with God. You you do you don't have to try to ask Him uh, why you let this happen to me and why you uh 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 
God, you, every, God said, you tell my people, and he said, I'm telling you too, Vivian, anytime you come to me with that kind of a why question, you calling me into court. And so he kept talking and talking, and then his friends would talk, and, and he agreed with Bill Had with one of his conversations, one of his uh, orations, and uh, Bill Dad was saying this about God and that about God, and, and he said, uh, how Job said in essence, yep, Bill Dad, those are some principles. You're right, but you ain't helping me. You're not helping me. So in actuality, what God is really saying, Job I've been a blessing to you. You've forgotten that real quick. You do know who I am. That's why you're careful about saying some things to me, Job. And God got quiet on him. He got so quiet on Job until Job said, look in there, read all the way through. He says, God hid from me. He wasn't hiding. He just wasn't talking. <laughs> Glory. It wasn't for his. It wasn't his time to talk. He let Job talk. He let Zilbat, Zilhap, Zilhap, or whatever his name, Bill had. He let all of them talk. And when they got through talking, and God opened his mouth, and he began to speak. And when God speaks, it, it's it's something to tear up something. His voice is so strong. It is so powerful. And all you had to say, it just goes down the drain. And he went from depression. He went from talking uh, in, the, in a depressed mode to bolding, coming bold with courage to say, I have not done anything until he finally said, this is useless. I just wish that my mom had uh, not ever had me. The nerve of you to say that in front of your creator. And so God allowed him to keep talking until he got tired and realized. That's why my message was the futility of dragging, of bringing God into court. And so he's saying to me this morning, I was milling over that message. It was still, I was telling my girlfriend, uh, it was still blessing me. And so finally, he said to me this morning, Vivian, he says, People are not uh, uh, understanding uh, their blessings. They're not appreciative of their blessings. They don't recognize things that happen to them as being blessings. He says, that I, but I qualified you when you came into my, my kingdom, when I became your father. And he said, I qualified you for blessings. He said, but you don't want to accept the fact that I also qualified you for sufferings. I customized your sufferings. Whatever you go through, I allowed it. Or I brought it on. I allowed it. My sovereignty can't be um, dealt with. You can't tamper with my sovereignty. You can't tamper with my nature. You can't tamper with my character. I cannot. It is impossible for me to be contaminated with sin. You are a sinner, so I can't be contaminated with your sins. He said, but I love you so much until I sent my only begotten son. And he took them uh, not into his nature or into his character, but he took on your sins in his body. Because the body, ooh, da, 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 ba, sha, the body represents death. The the body represents something connected to, to the to the ground and to the world and to the evil that 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 occurred and was cursed when Adam sinned. I made him the federal head, but he sinned and he messed things up. He said, but you got to recognize that I've turned those things around. I have I have cleansed. Uh, those who want to come to me, I, 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 I've made it possible for you to have a, a relationship with me. I've given you a mediator. I've given you someone that will mediate between me and you. And he said, that's my only begotten son, the perfect lamb that shed the, the blood that would cleanse us from all of our sins. And, and so I said, um, the Lord said to me this morning, Vivian, you and others, you've got to learn to remember, or you got to learn. Some can't remember because they don't know that you got to learn that while you are walking this journey, you must be positioned. 
And the positioning doesn't mean your status as a supervisor, as a an evangelist missionary. That's not what he's talking about. That uh, uh, that's not what he's talking about. Uh, some of us don't even qualify for that, uh, according to heaven. He's talking about that part that connects with him. I need your spirit to be submissive to me. I need your spirit and your mind to come into a oneness and to come in a oneness with me. Then when you do that, you learn uh, the power of, of submitting to me, then you will be positioning yourself. And when you're positioning yourself, uh, you're ready to hear from me. Uh, you're ready to know what's going on around you. And so there's so many people in the body of Christ that don't even know, they don't even have a clue um, as to what's going on around them. You better hear the voices of the season, people of God. You better hear the voices of those who are positioned and God has given them the assignment to speak as of the oracles of God. I try not to speak in the flesh, but I speak as of the oracles of God, the words uh, uh, that come directly from God. And when they come directly from God, I'm learning. If you don't like that, that's on you. As long as I'm obeying God, I, I love the Lord's people. And sometimes you have to say things you really don't want to have to say to people. But if you don't bring them to a screeching halt to understand, if you keep making these steps that you're making, you, you're moving on a journey away from the anointing. You, you're moving on a journey that pulls you away from the connection the spiritual connection, uh, the spiritual relationship, the spiritual fellowship, because he wants us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Grow in it. You can't stay in the same spot. You started at the basement level when you gave your life to Christ. Though in, 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 he's, he's pulled you out of sin, which brings you up, but you're starting at the basement. And, and that's because of your flesh, not because he can't bring you straight, but he realizes because you're still in a wicked and a untoward generation that you've got all these uh, negative symbols and negative uh, uh, attacks and negative arrows that are shooting at you. You have an enemy. You have an enemy. You have enemy slash enemies. You're arch enemy, the devil, and then all of his little demons and cohorts. You have enemies. And so in order for you to do warfare and to stay in position uh, in your relationship with him, you've got to know how to stand. You've got to know how to resist. you got to know how to do warfare. And most of us do not. And so I'm looking at the babies at my church and um, they've not come to that to grips with uh, what it takes to experience a, a deeper level of God. And so some of them are still milling around uh, at the basement level. I venture to say that uh, in some of the relationships that the ones that you know want to marry and all, I don't want to serve notice, but it's the Lord to show them. But just because you got pregnant by somebody, um, but you now want to give your life to Christ, it doesn't mean that uh, you need to pull that person in as your mate. That 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 may be the worst thing you can do. So you got to be able to be nurtured and taught. And since you you're not tuned in and you don't really know the voice of God, listen to someone who hears the voice of God. Be willing to be submissive because when you become submissive, submissiveness uh, takes on a negative connotation with most of us, but submissiveness to the kingdom and to the king means not down, but it means that you have surrendered yourself to go up. Submissiveness in the kingdom of God is totally in reverse to what we consider as we we consider submissiveness as weakness but god consider it considers it as a means to go up in your spiritual walk and your spirit that spiritual realm in your spiritual position in him uh, place yourself 
place yourself um, on the tower like the prophet. He didn't understand, as I said, why you let the Chaldeans, why you let them uh, overtake us and rule us and mistreat us? We're your children. And God said, but you are my disobedient children. And I'm using the Chaldeans as an instrument to clean you up, to set you back on the path, to reposition you. And so he didn't have an answer at the time. And so what he did, he says, I'm not leaving. I'm going to position myself on this, uh, on this tower and I'm going to wait for your answer because I need an answer. And so if you read on down in there, uh, the Bible says, uh, God said, um, run with the vision, run with the vision, take this vision and spread the news. And so once you position yourself, wherever God sends you, whatever that calling is upon your life, it will become alive to you, it will become a vivid. Um, there are people like me who start out? Uh, who started out at a certain age? I started out as a young uh, child. I gave my life to the Lord. I think it was around age 12. But it still does not mean <laughs> that we don't grow. Um, it doesn't mean that age at age 25 I knew who I was. It doesn't mean that at all. It simply means that I have turned around. I'm headed in a different direction. I'm not headed to where there are things uh, what we call losses. I'm headed in the direction of gain. And uh, along the way, God customizes what I walk through. God knows my limitations. He knows my weaknesses. He knows my purpose. Let's let that sink in for a minute. He knows my purpose in spite of my weaknesses. He knows my purpose. And so um, knowing my purpose, I have to look to him because I don't see that in me. I, I don't see what God sees yet. But he's taking me there. As long as I stay in communication and stay around the right people and uh, he's going to get me there because not knowing my identity means my esteem, my uh, value is on the ground in my mind and the devil knows it. So he'll do everything he can. He'll put roadblocks in the way to keep me from knowing who I am, knowing my identity. There's nothing worse than stolen identity. There's nothing worse, and I was watching a movie, um, I've forgotten now all of it, but this person, their name was something totally different. They were hiding who, they didn't want anybody to know their background. They didn't want anybody to know who they were, so they changed their name. But when you come into the kingdom of God, there should be no shame in your game. There should be nothing you should be ashamed of because he came, uh, he sent his son and he washed away. He forgave us of all of our sins. We got to understand that. And like I say, when he showed me that visual as the people stood at that altar, I saw like a field like. And all I saw stick, and I, my spirit man, when the Lord uses you, you just kind of know. I can't explain it. I knew these were weeds, different sizes, different kinds of weeds, and they'll choke out the life. So when people first get saved, they're struggling because of the weeds that have to be dug up and the weeds that have to be cut down. He said, but underneath the weeds, he said, when, when you gave your life to Christ, the word of God was a seed. That seed was sown into the ground. And he said, but what we don't understand is the weeds are still there. He's forgiven us and given to us fruit that's way down underneath the ground of all the weeds. You can't hardly see because of the weeds. He said, but if you stay with me and stay in my word and, and keep a heart of humility, I'll show you how to cut down the weeds. 
I'll show you how to survive. I'll show you how to get rid of everything that is hindering you, whether it's boyfriend, husband, um, family members, people on the job. I'll show you how to live. I'll show you how to survive. As I told them on Sunday, we need to quit quoting what we don't believe because the Bible tells us that we've been God has foreknowledge of us. And he says, all things are working together for my good. Does it always feel good? No. It is the pain that brings the gain because he's cutting off stuff. He's teaching you how to trust him. He's teaching you that my word is true. He's teaching each of us who he really is. We have a glimpse of him. We've learned some things. But God is so expansive until there's nothing to measure his bigness by. There's nothing uh, that we've ever would see or ever see that will can tell or describe his expansiveness. That will describe how big God is. And how soon we forget when we're going through things that the biggest thing that ever existed is a lump of love. And he loves me so much. Though I have to walk through these valleys, though I have to face all this stuff in my life, he has a plan. And I can't allow the enemy to make me come up with an alternative plan. Yes, Valerie. Yes, we can't even imagine, baby. It is so expansive until I have to back off of it. it. I back up off of that sometimes in my thinking as I do the Trinity. It is so it is it is so beyond our reasoning. It, it is so beyond uh, almost explanation. God allows some of us to give some illustrations, but it, it still doesn't do it justice. It still doesn't do it justice. And so I, 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 that's my area, y'all. Theology is my area, and I love it. And, and anytime anybody's talking about the Trinity, talking about God and his nature and his character, uh, talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, talking about uh, uh, the purpose for sending Jesus and him shedding his blood, the perfect spotless lamb, you have my attention. What in the world do I look like? People do it, though. Yes, it is mind-blowing, Valerie. Don't start me, girl. Don't don't start this old lady right here. You, you talking my talk. Woo, God. Mm. How can... I was thinking the other day I was cleaning. I think it was Friday or Saturday. And I said, Lord, as I was moving around, I said, Lord, nobody can take a black heart and wash it in the red blood and it come out whiter than snow and i thought immediately about the color of snow it's so bright and so white until it almost looks like the sun uh it, it is so bright it gives off such a, a a bright white glow and so when you when you take me there oh i i read on that i i read uh 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 about uh, the God that we serve, about the names of God. I love studying that. Here's the powerful thing about the Trinity, and I, I, I shared it a couple of times this, this month uh, as I was ministering. Here's the thing about the Trinity. The Trinity um, has to do with one, oneness, but you got three that, it's, and you know what the Lord, oh God, this morning I was thinking about it before I got up. You know, I read before I get up. And those of you who are tech savvy or computer savvy or internet savvy, let's say, when you click on a button, this is what God gave me now. Don't fight me on this. He, he showed, I told you he shows me illustrations and it's like a glimpse. I can see it perfectly. And it's like when you go and click, click on that uh, drop, that arrow, and a, a, a box drops down. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, do some thumbs up. If anybody understands what I'm talking about, you click on a link or you click on something 
a box and then uh, uh, I mean an arrow and then a box drops it's called the drop box it, it drops down and takes you to okay he says he said this is what he gave me this illustration this is for Vivian so don't fight me okay he says he says um the Trinity is like first of all the the, the box that you're going to click on is the essence it's the material that that the Trinity is made of it's, it's his nature and his character it, it, it makes them all one. They're made out of the same stuff. He says, but I go in. He says, but you go in and you click that box. And the whatever you're looking for, the drop down comes from the one box. The one box represents God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He says, depends upon what's needed, what part of God. Oh, Jesus. It depends upon what part of God do, do we need? What part of God needs to operate now? Go back to Genesis chapter 1 near the bottom. He talks about the creation. And with the creation, the drop box dropped. And you had God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All of them were there. All of them were part of the creation. But you clicked the one box. They all dropped down from the one box. Man, that thing was so, all I saw was a glimpse. All I saw was a vision. All I saw was a picture. And I got it. I understood it. And I said, God, I can use this maybe to illustrate to others what you're showing to me. And he said, so I'm, that one box is the whole oneness. The essence of the Trinity. God. That's God. That's God. But when you click the button where God is, what drops is what's needed. It may be God the Father. And then you may click it back up and then click God again. And now you may click on God the Son. Whatever function, they each have separate distinct functions. And whatever the function is, that's who shows up. And so when you go back into the Old Testament and they didn't know how to they didn't even they didn't even use vowels. They had Y H W H. The word was Yahweh, Jehovah. But he was so powerful until they didn't want to call his name. They left the vowels out when they wrote it. And so then, but you have God functioning in the Old Testament and based upon what he's doing, they give names to God. When Abraham laid his son out on the altar, God put a ram in the bush because a ram was needed because God had no intentions of Abraham killing his son as a sacrifice because it would represent the, the, the sacrifice of his son on Calvary. So it had to be right, but he could not let any other entity, any other individual actually be done like that because it was, it could only happen one time with his only begotten son. But he became right then because of what he did, he became Jehovah Jireh. Jireh meaning he, I won't, I'm not going to break it down, the word down to you, but it simply means that he was God, our provider. He, he provided what was needed at the time that it was needed. It was God. So the Old Testament shows us the various facets of what God, his heart, his heart and his, his, his care and his function and, and who he really is. Jehovah Nissi, the banner, when they went to war, he then became the banner. They, they marched under the holy banner of, of, of God and he became their banner, the standard by which they, they marched, the standard by which they live or should have lived. Jehovah Nissi. Jehovah, Jehovah Shema, he's here everywhere. He's, he, he's always here in the present. He's there. He's here. And it shows us the nature of God. But when it comes to actually the personalities of God, 
go back to the arrow, click the arrow, and watch the drop downs. Click the one arrow, the box with the one arrow, click it, and what can drop down? God the Father, or God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit. So it comes down as a sub link, but it's still coming from the one God. He's not divided. He's not part of him here and part of him there. He's one. There's the oneness of the three. The three together make one. And so I'm grateful. So I want you to learn to position yourself. Get your ears ready. Get your heart ready. Get your spirit ready. Stay on ready. Stay in a, 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 a mode of repentance. Don't allow any thoughts to penetrate your heart. Be in control by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be in control of anything that tries to infiltrate that part that that God wants to be reserved for him. Stay in that and in, in, stay positioned. Stay positioned. I love you all. I will be, I don't know if anybody from my church, um, probably the, you all, <laughs> I was praying about at when my, the, the young man that I love, um, pastor, um, Jesse Lipford Jr. He is the son of my my now late supervisor that I left from under when when Bishop Wright <clears throat> um, made me supervisor. We had no supervisor at first, and but I left from under her tutelage, under service to her, and this is her son, and it 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 warms my heart for him to reach out to me because he feels like I have something a word from the Lord, and so. When he asked me, I did like I did with Mother Jenkins. I said, well, let me pray about this and let me see what the Lord is saying because I don't just run out and take engagements. Um, I have my husband that I'm seeing after and um, it takes more than people know uh, to function and to make sure he's in good hands and see who's able to sit with him that I know that I that should be able to do it and I'm satisfied and it's basically my daughters and it's not my daughters my CNA but basically when it comes to that like that my daughters my two two of my daughters my baby girl is not in 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 this area it's not in the United States right now and so when the Lord began to deal with me like he dealt with me about going to Tennessee fifth um, he began to show me uh, that I was needed because there's a word. I don't know what it is yet. There is a word for that house. <clears throat> and so I started uh, praying and um, thinking on it. And I was talking to my girlfriend and she said something that gave me my confirmation we were talking about it, and that was not this Sunday, but Sunday before last. And so I said, okay, God. So I got to church. Love you too, darling. Oh, that's so wonderful, darling. That's, 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 that's my reasonable service, sugar. That's my reasonable service. Bless your heart. So when I got to church Sunday before this past Sunday, yesterday, I said, I'm going to go ahead and call him and confirm with him. And I knew that when God confirmed it, that he was going to iron out and work out every detail concerning my husband's care, concerning me personally. And I said, well, maybe what I'll do, because he, he rebuked me um, when I, before I went to Tennessee 5, and I kept saying, Lord, how am I going to do that? How am I going to go and minister at my church at 10 and then turn around? Most people don't have things at 1 o'clock and be um, refreshed, eaten, make sure my husband is eaten, even though somebody's here with him. I take care of that part, make sure his food is ready. And um, 
get there at some tw one o'clock and the person that's going to pick me up has to have time to get from her church. Man, and I, the Lord spoke to me, you also plain. I felt so, I was embarrassed. He said, who told you that you had to be at West Haven for the morning service? Oh, I said, Lord, nobody. That's my flesh. Please forgive me. And I stayed home and I watched the broadcast. I gave everybody assignments. They did a perfect job. The Lord says, you've trained them. You got to know that the training is in them now. And so here I am again, and I'm not, um, what is it? Oh, God, the word won't come to me. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> I'm not going to um, second guess God this time. Uh, I'm waiting on him. And so I was waiting on him. And so I was speaking with my bishop because there are times like for Christmas and um New Year's, you know, we do maybe, it, since it was on Sunday, uh, the Lord said, just do a one-hour service. And the people came out. And um, talking with my bishop, he confirmed uh, the one hour. So <clears throat> I'm going to go. I'm not, uh, probably not speaking, but I'm going to uh, go. And I've selected the speakers that he's given to me. And um, uh, they're ready. I told him Sunday, said, if I ask you to do something, I want you to say, yes, mother, <laughs> I'm happy to do it. And when um, I got back, everybody accepted uh, and we're moving on um, for Sunday for one hour, one hour. So I'll probably, I will probably facilitate if the Lord leads me, I'll probably facilitate and uh, we'll be leaving out of there. So maybe one of my babies uh, will um, record it uh, while with the Yeah, Alicia. Yeah, baby. Mwah. Yes, man. I'm so proud of y'all. I know what to do. So once we get there uh, with Pastor Lippert, I uh, told him I'll be there. I think I text him. If not, I got to check that I will be there at 1115 because they're right in the neighborhood of where our church is. And so whoever's going to trail me, uh, uh, kind of help me out, will tra can trail me uh, to the church and the rest can come on and, you know, to the service. And so we will have a one hour service from the sanctuary of uh, the West Haven um, church and then maybe one of the the babies at my church uh, will take my phone and uh, um, go live so that you can hear the message there. Uh, I'll be I won't be I'm normally anybody knows me I'm there before time I don't go to places late. Now sometimes I'll sit outside because um, it's like a contamination. When I get into too many conversations uh, before I speak, <clears throat> sometimes I, I don't want to do that. So rather than be rude to people, I'll just sit out in the car with whomever's driving me or if I'm I'm usually with someone, but I'll sit out there and, and just kind of meditate and, and keep quiet um, because I don't want to uh, appear rude when people just start talking, 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 and hey, mother, da, da, da. So I'll do that, but I'm always before time unless something happens. And so, but I did or will alert the pastor that I'll be there at, I should be leaving West Haven uh, at 11 o'clock to get there at around 11.15. I'm honored, and my bishop confirmed it. And he said, yes, mother, that's that's what you need to do. And so uh, we will have our service for the one hour. I'm excited about hearing uh, ones that don't get up a lot. And then um, the aspiring missionaries, I'm going to let them come forth sometimes so they can exercise and be prepared uh, in the area God called them to. Now, let me say this. I know, and I've studied the book, I've, I've been... Uh, and um, the person the, uh, over the examining board under another supervisor, uh, I set up my guidelines uh, in my jurisdiction for the women's department and for the licensing of the women um, in our jurisdiction. Um, but this is what bothers me, and I believe the Lord's going to change this because I saw it way back in the 90s. 
they asked the question on the back of the exam when I was getting my evangelist missionary license, if you could improve, if you can change some things uh, in the women's department in the Church of God in Christ. And I wrote, some people laughed at me because I was still writing, uh, but it's okay. Um, I wrote that I really would love to see licenses with a distinction. This is my this is my heart because the definition and the description of an evangelist missionary is one who is called out to go out, you know, to places and evangelize, do revivals and what have you. But I have a I have a concern about everybody getting that same license reading the same way because there are some people who are prayer warriors they are intercessors they may travel and go out and do that but there are some that's just their gift their calling and they are still given the same license i would love to see the licenses uh, be distinct in what this person is called to do and their gifting. Now, that's the desire of my heart. I am um, not on that committee. I was on the committee to um, revise the women's department handbook of the Church of God in Christ, but they needed it done so quickly to get it to the publishers until um, they told us they were going to go on and make the corrections of s several people under Mother on that committee that headed that committee to go on and make the corrections. But I was really excited about <laughs> having a part in that. Um, but I really want people to feel you can't be whom you're not. You, you can't function well if God has a certain anointing on you and people keep pushing you. Uh, let me see what who's saying, Valerie. Uh, Valerie, work in the field prior to receive. Yes, yes, I believe that. And and so I try to, West Haven can attest to this, I try to put people where they work well, whatever their gifts and talents are. I don't care if you feel like you want to look and act like, no, you be what God has anointed you to be. That's all you can be. And so I try to appoint people under my tutelage, under my bishop, I try to appoint people according to, and sometimes, you know, you put people there and they have the the talent or the ability, but they got the bad attitudes or the bad perspective or uh, uh, um, their character needs to be worked on, you know, uh, but we learn from that. You suffer behind it sometimes, but anyway. All right, darling, love you. All right, sugar. That's my CNA, and I'm gonna get off of here. Um, and but so I just um, I'm looking at um, those whom God has blessed me to place since we you know come from the pandemic, and I've been trying to help my husband, and and um, Bishop told me to you know to keep going like I'm going um, to to keep the ministry going. I'm trying to place people where I see their anointing is. So I, I hope nobody thinks I'm sliding them. Um, but I would rather somebody put me where I know I'm effective. And so I don't always put all people up who are evangelist missionaries. Um, they should be able to teach something now. But I don't expect one person to act and sound like the other one. And then I try to teach my husband and I both. I know I've taught this over the years to try to teach people, accept people for whom God has made them. Don't try to compare them to somebody else because you, you mess yourself up and it's disrespectful to God's anointing on that person. And I'm looking at a baby on here now, Alicia. There's an anointing on this child's life. And and if she'll allow me, I'd like to guide her so she can see herself. Now, I could tell her some things, but she there's some things that she's going to have to see for herself. And, and of course, the enemy is going to try to 
uh, fight her and distract her because he sees the anointing. You know, the devil can see the uh, people can see the anointing and you don't understand what it is. And so she's one of the examples uh, that I want to see her not sidetracked. I want to see her grow and I want to see her uh, used by the Lord with the anointing that he's placed up on her life. Uh, with that comes, she's, she'll have to see her weaknesses. Uh, she'll have to appreciate her strengths. I'm just using her as an example. This is anybody. And I try to do that. And sometimes uh, people have taken advantage of that. They go out and tell stuff on you and they get close to you and, and they see what whatever your faults are and they magnify. You don't do that when you work under somebody. You got your stuff too. Don't do that. That'll come back to bite you in the behind. Amen. And so that's what I try to do with the women. Uh, but sometimes people have built up, built certain people up so big in their minds until they try to mimic them. Don't do that. You, you're you belittling God and you're belittling his anointing. You're belittling that geographical territory uh, and the competency he's placed upon your life to send you to do what he wants you to do. When you're trying to be like somebody else, then you're infringing. Paul even addressed that. He says, not that I'm trying to ride in on anybody else's anointing. If they got souls, that's them. I want to stay where God or go where God has called me and sent me to go because that's where uh, my anointing is. And so that's what I said to you, that there are going to be some places uh, that's going to shock me and it's going to astound other people that God is getting ready to send me, uh, not to gloat, but he said, you're the one one of the ones I've chosen because you will stand and speak what I tell you to speak and you don't have such close ties with people that you're afraid to stand up and tell the truth. That's what he told because I asked him, why you call me to do that like that? That was recently. And so he said, because the way you're wired and the way I have uh, anointed you, you will do this job. And you would do it well. It doesn't mean others won't be called out. But he said that rhema word to me. To me. So he wants. I told you this is the year. You better get a rhema word from the Lord. He keeps saying that to me. You better get a rhema word. You better hear the word. Study the word. Uh, get in the word. Let it get in you. And he will give you a rhema word. He's not giving you a rhema word. When you don't have any word in you. You're almost starving to death spiritually because there's no word in you that's 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 the part that strengthens you that refreshes you uh that's the part in you that keeps you going it keeps you alive it keeps you vibrant in the things of god the word of god and with that prayer but that word has everything to do with everything about you this is the year that we will not survive well without a rhyme word one of the things he's given to me i don't know it all but one of the reasons he's given that to me is that there are some things that are going to come up on us that you're going to need something to sustain you. You know, you know that the Bible says do not steal, but he wants you to pull from that principle and apply it to where you are. Where what you're standing in, where what are you dealing with? What are you facing? You need to take that specific word that's given specifically to you where you're standing and God will strengthen us. I asked him this morning. I told you it's a thing I'm dealing with right now. I said, God, I can survive in me or fix the problem. That's that's a sign. That's a sign of submissiveness because I'm not telling him what to do. I'm asking him, God, would you please, because you know my stamina, you know where, how I take, you know my weaknesses and my strengths. I says, oh God, I need you. Would you please either strengthen me or both or fix the situation? And so he said to me the other day at the stove, you all, and I know this should bless some people. This is a rhyme of word for somebody. He said to me, and when he said to me, I knew he wanted me to say it to everybody else because it was so profound. And I think this morning he reminded me of this. 
because I was that was in my heart. You know, I had gotten out of bed and he was asking him that and getting myself cleaned up and then headed to the kitchen. And he said to me, why you ask me to do things? And I've already promised you that I'll answer you. And then you don't believe that I'm going to do it. He said, I don't know why my people do that. He said, you need to be expecting me to do it. Not wondering, or, well, he didn't. I thought he, uh-uh-uh. When you plant the seed toward God and say, God, would you please do this for me? I'm asking you. In the name of your son, Jesus, he said, will you please do that for me, God? He says, why is it you don't believe I'm going to do it? He says, why do you do that like that? Oh, he reminded me of that as I was at the stove this morning. I said, oh, God, because I was asking him these two things. Either strengthen me. I said, you know me. You know my heart take. You know my weakness. I said, this is a tough thing right here. And what happens sometimes, the devil will bring fear or dread. My girlfriend says all the time, one of the worst thing, worse than what, if you're thinking of the worst thing that can happen, dread is worse than it happening. Because a lot of times what we dread doesn't even happen. But the fear, the torment, it comes from the devil. He'll tell you, well, they're going to take your, your job is going to lay you off. You need to tell the devil, so. I belong to God. He takes care of me. So if he takes my job, I wait on him to provide. However he's going to provide, give me a new job, whatever. I don't depend on what you say to me. I depend on God. Fear is like, yes, it is, baby. It, it eats away at your everything. He spoke that to me at the stove. He said, Vivian, don't. He said, when you ask me for something, you don't. I'm already on the case. He said, before you even ask me, I've already put it in motion. Oh, God from glory. I've already. I've already. I know you're going to ask me. I've already got it in motion. I'm just waiting on the connectivity of you to ask me. Ah. He said, so stop asking me things and then making me out to be like a liar. If you ask me, I told you I'm going to come through. I might not come through when you want me to, but I'm going to come through. And to God be the glory. I love you all with the love of the Lord. I'm getting ready to get in here and get some things done. I've got to, I want to do a little meditation and a little study if my husband will let me. And if he doesn't, I sometimes we'll sit and, and I can get him to talk. Sometimes I can't get him to talk. I just take it as it comes and I minister to him, or, or kiss him, or ask him to give me a kiss, and, and lay hands on his head, and, and, and I'll have time to do that. And so uh, you do pray for me, and pray for my strength. Um, there are some greater things coming down the pipe. I don't understand it. That's all I can sense right now. And, and uh, oh God, oh God, oh God. So where I'm going Sunday is like a seed. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Isha, glory. Where I'm going Sunday is like a seed to things further. God is saying this to me right now. Hear me, hear me well. When you obey him, it's like a seed. Every time you obey him, it's a seed. And that seed uh, is planted and takes you to to greater territory, greater things. So obey him. It's like a seed. So he's saying to me, where I'm going Sunday, it's like I'm being obedient. He says, you're planting a seed for the next assignment. And so he's going to move. He's going to do some things where I'm going. I'm going in his name. My name doesn't mean anything, but the name of the of the Lord he, he brought that scripture to me, the, I think it was Saturday. He said, my name is a strong tower. You can run into it. You can call my name. He said, it, it will uh, cover you. It will keep you safe. He said, my name. Not anybody else's name. We honor, we praise God for the different people and how they serve. But there's nothing to compare to the name of Jesus. Nothing to compare. So I love the Lord and I want to be obedient 
and I don't want, I want to God to totally remove from me um, the dread. You know, sometimes you you say, I'm going to the store. Oh, child, every time I go to like, the parking lot, that's dread. Don't do that. You don't even know if the parking lot is full. You don't even know if the lines are full, and you're already dreading. I want him to remove that from me. I want to have so much trust in God until if he tells me to go, if I have to go, I know he's covering me. And whatever comes my way, I know God has me in the palm of his hands. All right, I'm going to get off of here. I love you. I'm going to post this on all my pages. Keep me in prayer. Uh, keep me before the Lord. And I look forward to seeing some of you on the, uh, if I can get one of the babies to record on the live after the one hour. One hour we will be live for my church. And then when I uh, go on to the next church, they will record the word, the bringing of the word, uh, hopefully and prayerfully on Sunday at 11 well we won't come on right away because when i get there i'm sure they uh, be in the the opening of their services and the choir singing and all of that so i'm a, i'm estimating that they will have me up maybe at least by noon i don't know how their stuff runs thank you darling please continue valerie oh i thank you for that thank you for that so so much I love you. Love the people of God. Let's see if. Yes, tell Sean, please. I'm looking for him to support me now. I'm looking for him. I'm I'm praying for him too. Yeah, I'm looking for him, baby. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him to support now. Tell mother, tell mother. He told me he was coming, so I'm looking for him to come on. We won't we shouldn't be there that long and uh, just prepare yourself for that day. We're giving God most of that morning, that afternoon. We're looking forward to it, baby. We're going to be praying. We're going to be praying that the will of the Lord will be done. Amen. So you all continue. Thank you, Valerie, for that. Thank you so much for that. Amen. I love you all. And um, I may do some posting today. Depends on how the Lord is dealing with me. I may do some posting uh, today. Pray for me. Pray, please really pray for my husband uh, and pray for my family, my four children and my four grandchildren. I have four and four, four children and four grandchildren. I love you with the love of the Lord. Mm. And you can't do a thing about it. Have a blessed day today. Love you.